What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Henny. We back at it again. Um, happy, Merry Christmas. Tomorrow's Merry, tomorrow's Christmas. Today is uh, Christmas Eve, but I'm wishing you guys a Christmas if you guys watch this, you know, today or tomorrow. Um, I'm about to go to the groceries real quick, grab some food. The fridge is empty. Um, recently, I moved back in with my parents because I had to kind of get my shit together. I was living in Miami for the last three years, and it was fun and all, and I, you know, I had my own place and all that, but <sighs> the work situation got really hard in Miami. Like The little business that I was running, which was selling cocktails, just is not a viable business. It's, the income got too randomized. Um, the cost of running the business was starting to exceed the actual revenue and then the risk that came with it, right? Like we weren't supposed to be doing what we were doing. So that became an issue. So I kind of wanted to get back fully into software engineering. I've been coding for seven years so I, or six, seven years. So I feel like I have some authority in the space. It's not like day one. I'm not just getting out of a boot camp. I'm not just completing a CS degree, right? Like I've been coding like real life coding for years. I have, it's crazy when I, yo, listen, not trying to talk shit, all right? But I've already made like three portfolio sites with like those six projects up there. I'm on my third one and I'm thinking about making my fourth. All right, I'm keeping it real with you guys. I'm already on my fourth. I don't, yo, I see guys with degrees, with degrees. And they be having like two projects on their GitHubs, bro. Oh my God, where's your portfolio site, the resume? And they still land a job easier than me, bro. Yo, it's fucked up. I have hundreds of repos, hundreds of projects with demos and videos and all of the new. It's fucked up, yo. But okay, I'm not gonna complain, all right? I'm just gonna keep focusing on what I do best and that's build, all right? So I built a small project recently. Nothing fancy, guys. I don't want you guys thinking I built the next Facebook. I built this in less than 24 hours, maybe 24 hours to be exact. Yeah, because I started it at around like noon and I finished it the next day at noon. So yeah, but I wasn't up the whole time. I did kind of sleep, so I don't know. Just like under 24 hours. So the app is called Wall of Prayers. And I built this for my local church community that we you know, get together once a week and you know we have a little Bible study for like an hour, and at the end of every hour, we you know send prayers to people that we know who might need one, friends in need, people in need. We tend to take a few moments to pray for them. So I got me the idea, and essentially like this was kind of a spin-off of an app that I liked, which was an old school app called uh, FML. Fuck my life, right? You know, part of my French. But essentially, it was like a like a thread where people would just post like a funny little like a tweet style post and then it just kind of talks about like a random thing in their day but the theme of this one is just like sending a prayer to somebody right um so you know people are going through a rough time so then you know like i'm about to you know i pray everyone gets what they're chasing in this life Boom. And boom, there it is. You don't need an account, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of just come in here, play with it, change the order if you like that. Um, but I kept it really simple, like I said. I have more things that I want to do to it, um, but that will be like on the second version. Like I said, I built this in a day, guys. And so my goal now is to get some feedback this week from the community and then see where I can, you know, improve things that they'd like to see and, you know, just go from there. Um, but it is live, you know, wallofprayers.com. Go check that out. Go support your boy. And um, other than that, I mean, I've been working on other side projects. Um, I built a LinkedIn poster not that long ago. Essentially, it is like... If you don't want to come up with content ideas, which I know it can be kind of boring, like, you know, I'm, help, I'm using AI to help generate more ideas um, and, it, you know, to, to post on LinkedIn. I did it the other day and I'm not even going to lie, my engagement went through the roof. Like, it was insane. Within minutes, I was getting massive amounts of engagement. So, like, if I wanted to use it all day and spam my feed, I could. I just ran it for a couple of days to kind of get a test subject and I was able to see like, wow, like 
I'm, a, I'm getting a lot of like eyes on my posts. And, and, and some of the stuff is really funny, you know what I'm saying? It brings with a funny, funny, uh, a funny put. So that was kind of cool. Um, so I'm kind of doing another app right now. Um, I should probably have it done by the end of this week. Essentially, it's kind of like that. I'm using AI again to spin off like another social media platform. I don't want to name it until the project is done, but you guys will see it. Um, and I'm adding much more features. And essentially, it's just kind of like that, you know, coming up with more posts. Um, and I kind of like that space. I feel like, you know, social media is not going anywhere. So like, why not help somehow make my life easier? If it's something that I truly would use, I build it. Like that's usually kind of how I go about it. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. Um, that's what I'm building. And that's where I'm at with this software stuff. Um, I am job hunting. Um, so if you guys are engineers and you guys know if any company's hiring and you want to refer your boy, hit me up. I, man, it's been weird. Like I just put myself back on the market this year. So I'm not going to try to like complain too much, but bro, like I got one offer this year in the summer and it was for like an internship. And oh, man, I just, I like a couple years ago, I did a few of those little internships. They were paid, but I just don't want to go through that process again of like, I'm trying to lock in a salary, you know what I'm saying? Like a nice pay, like it don't gotta be the top of the top or just slightly below average is fine for me just to get my feet wet and we can scale up, you know? But um, yeah, man, the job hunt has been weird, man. Like I haven't really been getting replies. Maybe it's just cause it's the end of the year and people are busy, but I'm not gonna complain too much. I'm just gonna focus on what I do best and that's build. Um, so we are applying. I am looking for work as a software dev again. Um, hoping not to be on the market for like too long. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, as for college, I enrolled at Harvard, right? Like I'm back at, I'm, I'm at Harvard now, guys. Um, I enrolled, I transferred all my credits from community college and they accepted them. Um, so they transferred Equally, 64 credits that I was lucky to build in community college, got my associate's degree, graduated there. So the program I'm in, I didn't go into Harvard. Like, I want to speak about this because I think some people like, hey, like, Henny, did you get the fucking SATs? And like, how'd you get in? Like, who, you know, who, who would you have sex with, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? No funny stuff, right? I'm just joking. But like, realistically harvard i've known about this since i was like 16 years old like you know when you're a boston kid especially when you're born in cambridge like you just know everything about the city so i know about harvard's extension school for over 10 20 years like it's a do it's like what well, tell you like 15 years it's a, it's a nice program that allows people in the exact position that i'm in where like let's say i've completed my associate's degree and you want to finish your bachelor's and master's with them that's the two degrees they offer your bachelor's and your master's so you can, I think if I'm not mistaken, you can get your whole bachelor's with them, but you have to pay. And so you kind of have to run through the financial aid and, and see how much it costs for your case. I don't know what it is for everybody. Everybody's a little bit different. I'm going to tell you straight up guys, it is not cheap. It, you will probably get a much cheaper education somewhere else, but you know, this education comes at the price of Harvard, right? You're paying for some of the most top educators to be in that network, to be in that world. I look at it more like a business relationship. Um, I'm investing in my education, you know, and I don't like to like, I don't like to underspend when it comes to qual like my education. I like my shit to be top notch. If I have to spend a little bit more, it's completely okay with me. Um, so going to Harvard's extension program, essentially I'm still working with Harvard level professors. Some of them have PhDs, some of them are Harvard full-time professors. They work at the Harvard college during their day, but they teach at Harvard extension during the night. And so that's where most of the classes run is towards the evening. Um, in two weeks, I start my first class, which is just intro to academic writing. Um, I'm sure we all taken this class in college before. It's not a complicated class, a lot of reading and writing, but at Harvard level. And so this is like a get ready class to like what's to come. After that, that class is an accelerated class. It's three weeks long. Um, once I finish that class, I'm taking a math class, which is like academic math, like, you know, like not practical, probably nothing too advanced like calculus, but like, you know, a lot of practical math at a, at a college level. And then I'm taking the advanced version of the intro to writing, academic writing class. But that's not gonna be until the summer session. So once you complete the 12 credits, you get accepted into the program. 
That's usually how it works. It's called an earn your way in admission. And you have to score, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at least a B, B, yeah, at least a B or higher across all course, uh, all classes. And then you get accepted as a degree candidate, and then you can finish the rest of your degree. So I'm getting 12 credits regardless, com you know, completing the classes. And then if I do well, I can go for the degree. The degree, uh, I'm really sitting on the fence. Like I wanna. They have these certificates while you're getting your degree, which is really cool. I mean, like, I, I swear, to, like, I swear to you, this Harvard extension, like, every time I look at it, I'm so excited about it. It's just such a, it's such an opportunity to learn, you know, at a really high level. And like, some like they have, you know, on-site classes that come included with it. Not all of them are on-site. A lot of them are online. But given that I don't live too far from the campus, I can still you know, go to campus and use all of their resources if I wanted to, libraries, their, you know, gym facilities, even dining halls and student clubs and all these cool things that it's almost, it makes me feel like I'm a student there. Well, I am a student there, right? But it's just like, it, it gives you that sense of like, you know, community. And they also have off, um, what do you call it? Local, uh, local housing. So you're able to, with other students, um, I don't think they're all Harvard students, or maybe they are actually. I don't know, I have to look more into it, but they have like, you know, shared housing for a lot of the students around, you know, the neighborhood. So once I get accepted into the degree program and I complete these two, three classes, I'm planning to move on campus to get that full campus experience while working as a software developer. I'm still going to continuously build applications, but I want to kind of finish this degree. Uh, a big part of me really just wants to get my master's degree already. And, you know, I'm at that age, I'm 33 now, where, like, a lot of people, you either got, like, in your 20s, you usually get your bachelor's and then you go work. That's usually how most people do it. And, you know, if you're very, you know, like, ambitious, you might get your master's in your 20s and you, you know, get it out the way. But a lot of people, the average age of the degree that I'm going for is around 37 years old. So most people don't even get this degree until they're 37, in their 30s, right? And so I'm just on time. The way I look at it is I'm just in time. I completed my associate's degree around like 22, 23, and then I went to go work in the real world. You know, I was running my production company where I was doing photography, videography, shooting media, and that went well. That went well, like, you know, pre-pandemic, I was, you know, I was, posting content, working with brands and all that, but you know, things have changed. Like, I don't, I don't know, it's like the iPhone got better, like, you know, content is now different. Like, it wasn't like it was then, like you would just post an Instagram post. Now you got reels, now you got these, you got shorts, you got videos, you got TikTok, you got, like, so the landscape has changed. And you would think that would be better for the creator, but not really. It's because like we're in an influx of new creators, you know, like the next generation behind me is now creating all and they have different styles and they have different way. And so like, I, I guess I could just say I kind of fell off. So I moved into software engineering, you know, at the time I was heavy into crypto anyways. And so that's where I picked up coding. And this is about six, yeah, about six years ago, almost six, seven years ago. And so that's where I'm at today. I like, I think it's the perfect um, skill set for me. Um, I'm, I've always been very analytical and creative. And I think engineering, software engineering, tests both of those skill sets really, really well. It's like people who know me, they're like, oh, Henny, you know, like you, you have this very like technical and analytical side of you. And that's where like trading, I mean, trading and, you know, coding comes in. Like the trading is one of my passions, but trading and coding comes in because it, it like it calls for that like that need that i have sometimes to like just be technical that's where coding comes in and you know like the creativity aspect of like me launching an app like you know hey wall of prayers right like now i'm in the point where i'm able to launch these ideas as they come to me um that part is being stimulated so i have both sides being stimulated and so that's why i truly love now like programming it's become such a passion project like passion for me um, I honestly don't do it for the money. I never really kind of did it for the money. I kind of did it for the education. Um, so that's like my, I guess, point of view. When you do things for the money, like you kind of take the joy out of it. And I know this market is saturated with, like, we got to pay bills. I get it. You know, everybody got, everybody wants a job. But I sometimes look at it. It's like, it's like, it's, it's so, it's, it steals the joy out of what you're doing. 
And so I try not to think about the money too much, but man, we're at a point where like, I do need to get a job. <laughs> you know, like I can't just keep coming home broke, empty handed, like, hey man, you wanna spare some change? Like that, that ain't cutting it no more, you know? So my goal is to just level up, get a, get a better degree, uh, make me a much more, um, you know, when I go back into the job market again, my, my resume is much stronger. My experience is much higher, right? Like, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to build those. And, you know, college keeps me learning. It keeps me sharp. And, you know, um, programming, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, but there's levels to this shit, you know? I'm, 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 I'm like at the entry game, right? Like, I'm still trying to get into big tech. I'm still trying to break in there, you know what I'm saying? And once I break in that, then there's like levels to that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. Um, I just wanted to update you guys. You know, I don't want to make this too long, but I hope everybody's having a wonderful rest of the year, man. I want to end this year with a bang. Um, as for me, I'm going to keep working on what I've been doing all year and that's getting better as a coder. I am still trading if you guys want to know, but I am. I'm not trading until 2025 because it's already the end of the year and I just think things are a little bit slower. And so I'm focusing on that a little bit later. That will be on my other YouTube channel. I'm gonna drop the app on this YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna see that, um, support your boy, you know, go check it out, drop a post. Um, other than that, you know, hit me up on LinkedIn if you wanna connect, I'm taking a social media break. So, I mean, you guys are probably wondering where's his Instagram, where is he on Twitter? Taking a break, guys. Fucking, you know, like those platforms can get come toxic sometimes, you know. But I am on LinkedIn with the job beggars. You know, that's what it is. I feel like I feel like LinkedIn is like indeed for job beggars, right? Like we're not. I, I'm not. I don't beg for a job, but I'm constantly showing you that I'm a good hire. And so that's usually my approach. Is I'm just showing you what I'm up to, right? I'm not begging for no job, but I'm constantly reminding you that I'm here, and. Don't hesitate to reach out. You know, your boy's out here. Uh, I am looking for opportunities to grow um, and work and code. Um, yeah, other than that, guys, take it easy. You know, don't stress, finesse. Aim to do better 1% a day and just uh, be happy. Cherish the people that you do have around you. I can't recommend that enough. Um, I'm very grateful to still have both of my parents and spend a little bit, spend some of this time with them. You know, money isn't really big right now in our family, but it's okay. Like I said, I still have my parents. I'm very grateful. Um, and, you know, things will figure themselves out when the time is right. So, you know, God bless everybody. I'm sending everybody a prayer out there. And, uh, that's it. Peace out.